Welcome to our virtual tour of the lobby murals located in our museum building of the Eisenhower Presidential Library. It only seems fitting we offer a little bit of history before we dive right into the murals themselves. In 1947, the Eisenhower Boyhood Home opened to visitors with plans to build a museum just to the east of the home on the family property. General Eisenhower would only agree if the museum was dedicated to honor all World War II veterans, not just him. Following World War II, as plans were underway to build this museum, Eisenhower announced his presidential campaign and was elected in November 1952. The museum focus later shifted to include his presidency. On November 11, 1954, now President Eisenhower returned to Abilene to dedicate the museum on the first Veterans Day, which was originally Armistice Day dedicated to the World War I veterans. Murals had always been planned for the lobby space, in keeping with the original intent of the museum, the two large murals located on the east and west sides of the lobby depict General Eisenhower's World War II career. The murals to the north and south we refer to as the life cycle murals depicting key moments from Ike's life and presidency. The murals were funded through a grant from the Abbey Foundation. In 1956, the two artists and two of Ike's brothers came to the dedication for the mural installation. Shown here, left to right, are Earl Eisenhower, Milton Eisenhower, Louis Boucher, and Ross Moffat. Louis Boucher, the artist selected for the World War II murals, was born in New York in 1896. Educated in New York and Paris, he began exhibiting paintings at the age of 20 and developed a career as a well-known mural artist. His collections can be seen in museums around the world, as well as post offices, auditoriums, and even railroad lounge cars. He passed away in 1969 the same year as Ike. The West Mural depicts the North Africa, Italy, and Sicily campaigns in World War II. The central focus is General Eisenhower depicted in the caves that were his headquarters on Gibraltar. A few of the key scenes include Casablanca, Tunis, and Salerno, and are rendered with great detail. The East Mural depicts later campaigns including Operation Overlord, Liberation of Paris, and Battle of the Bulge. This mural is centered around General Eisenhower with other members of the Shafe Command planning the D-Day invasion. Ross Moffat, the artist who painted the life cycle murals, was born in Clearfield, Iowa and studied at the Art Institute of Chicago. He taught at the University of Ohio and worked in Provincetown until his death in 1971. While mostly known for large landscape paintings and murals, his work is also exhibited in museums around the world including the National Gallery in Washington, D.C. The life cycle murals begin with Ike on his mom's lap with his two older brothers and dad in the background when the family briefly lived in Denison, Texas, while his father worked for the railroad. Of the seven boys born to David and Ida, Ike is the only one born outside of Dickinson County, Kansas. The next panel shows Ike playing baseball with his brothers at the family's first house when they moved back to Abilene. This is followed by a panel that focuses on the importance of education in their family. Both parents, David and Ida, went to college, and this image shows their nightly routine of gathering together and reading. The wide panel in the center shows the family working together in the garden, which was located near the current site of the museum. It also includes grandfather Jacob Eisenhower in the background when he lived with the family during his final years. Then we see Ike leaving Abilene on his way to West Point. As the story goes, the only time his mother ever cried. Then we see Ike as a cadet at the point, and finally a portrait of Ike and Mamie as they begin their life together. On the opposite side of the lobby, the life cycle murals continue the story following Ike's career after World War II. First as president of Columbia University, and then two years later, Ike was selected as the first commander of NATO, and he returned to Europe. The center panel shows President Eisenhower being sworn into office by Chief Justice Fred M. Vinson. To the left, we can see wife Mamie and son John with Vice President Nixon, and to the right, former presidents Truman and Hoover. The next panel shows Ike and Mamie at their beloved home in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This was the first and only home they ever owned after moving so many times during Ike's military career. They actually lived in 25 different places during their first 28 years of marriage. The Gettysburg farm was purchased in 1950 and for the first time, Mamie was able to renovate to their liking and to her ideas of what a home should be. 
The panel also shows the growing family with the grandchildren and hobbies, including Ike's golfing and painting. Ike also spent time raising Aberdeen Angus beef cattle. The final panel shows the famous Chance for Peace speech, which Ike delivered at the United Nations in 1953. A fitting choice for a warrior who spent the rest of his life waging peace. We hope you enjoyed your tour of the Lobby Murals and invite you to follow along with additional virtual tours found on our website and YouTube channels.